Thank you, Karsten. Hi, everybody. Uh, Jeff Spiritos from New York, a developer uh, and a, a educated structural engineer to talk to my fellow Journey members about leapfrogging frogging all past our technical efforts because you all will solve those technical efforts and our journey members will solve them and there are major problems in the world that mass timber can be the solution for and that's what we'll talk about. So these are two beliefs that we have that we ask you to think about. Perhaps you already believe in them, but we want to uh, get more conversation about because uh, they are issues that we do not have a lot of time to address. So when we speak to real estate, the real estate community about getting involved with timber, whether it's architects or engineers or folks from the city, the agencies or developers. These are a lot of the questions that we have and things that we ask them to think about because timber is not just another building system. Uh, it, it can go much further than that. So here's a little bit about what we've been working on. We were one of the two winners. We were the developer partner for one of the two winners of the U.S. Tall Wood Building Competition. And Tom here uh, is the architect for the other project in Portland. This was a 10-story condo in New York. Arup was our structural engineer and our fire engineer. And this project is not going to get built. We were awarded the prize two years ago, but New York City's fire department is not allowing any timber buildings. Uh, and they have folded their arms while timber buildings are being built around them. New York City is not yet ready for timber buildings. But it, was, it has lot lines on both sides where we're going to use CLT wall panels. It's completely timber. The core is timber. The shear walls are timber. The floors are timber and it's a glue lamb uh, frame. You can see the axonometric on the right. Moving forward, we are now in the final stages of getting ready to start a 7,500 square foot timber house in Lake Placid, New York. Uh, Bernard Gaffner, who is the engineer for Brock Commons, is our engineer. And it's uh, timber walls. This will employ a lot of passive house, house technology. Another project, we believe strongly in overbuilds, not demolishing the urban fabric, <coughs> rather than rather preserve, restore, and then grow timber buildings out of the top of them. So this is a project in New Haven, Connecticut. It's unreinforced masonry, where we're talking about putting two stories on top by bringing a timber stair and elevator core down to a new foundation, but that gives the lateral uh, resistance that it needs to put two floors of timber on top. But although this shows CLT exterior, the codes in New York, in the US do not allow CLT to be an exterior wall if you're above a few floors because it is a not not a non-combustible material. This is a flawed uh, code requirement that we need to overcome because obviously passive house construction is enhanced with mass timber. It's the easiest way to accomplish that. And without being able to use timber walls, you can't accomplish that. Here is another project. This is in New Rochelle, New York. It's a historic-like two-story steel frame building where we are, again, bringing two timber cores down to a new foundation and then growing a timber frame out of it with some shear walls, not too much different than what Benton is talking about here, although we're not employing that composite strategy. 
uh, although that may be worth reconsidering, but then put the CLT floors and bring it all the way up to the top. So that's four floors on top of a two-story steel frame building without having to increase the foundations or the strength of the existing steel system. So what we get into is the opportunity of using CLT to take all the operational carbon uh, system benefits that are prevailing in our industry and what our brothers and sisters that build steel and concrete buildings will talk about over the next couple of days, the fact that buildings are uh, emitting less and less carbon from an operational standpoint and marrying that with the carbon sequestration of timber to actually reduce to almost carbon neutrality uh, the full life cycle of a building. And I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with this. And the other mission that we are on, albeit a long-term one, is to prove, prove that the benefits of mass timber, it's prefabrication, it's healthiness, it's lower cost when we get more critical mass on the production side is really the only technology that can reduce the cost of construction for housing, for affordable housing, social housing, workforce housing, because every other type of construction has too many parts and pieces and too many workers with ever increasing costs to be able to change the equation to be able to get housing more cost effective. So we've embarked on, and this is East Coast US uh, centric, but we've embarked on a mission to try to quantify the benefits of building with mass timber. Uh, we're a long way from actually quantifying it, so we need help from all of you and all of your continents uh, and all of your co-associates to take up this mission of proving to those who are slow adopters that it makes sense to build with mass timber. So, this is the way forward. Mass timber is the optimal and perhaps only system that can improve the quality and reduce the cost of building. That all the technological improvements that engineers and researchers are working on, just like at the start of the steel and the start of the concrete age, they will get us to better performing and taller timber buildings. We know that. We're not going backward. There's no fatal flaw in mass timber design, engineering, and building. So 10 years from now, we'll be in a much different place than we are today, and we will see a lot more timber buildings. And the request of CTBUH, which we believe is the leading international institution for the whole spectrum of real estate, uh, the real estate enterprise, really needs to focus much more than they have on mass timber buildings. Thank you very much.